you a little, a little uh, list of people you're going to bring tonight to our back-to-school service. We're expecting a big crowd, so uh, don't miss it. Six o'clock this evening, we're, we're going to run at least one bus, maybe more, and pick up kids. Um, appreciate this young man, Anthony, driving it for us this, e- this evening. And uh, so don't forget that. Tonight, six o'clock, big back-to-school youth service. Now I'm going to look at Proverbs chapter 16 this morning. And, and I want you to look at verse 25. And verse 25 is a verse that's, that has spoke to my heart for many, many, many years. And I'm going to do something this morning and illustrate that verse. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse number 5. 25. There is a way. You see that? Down just a tad, brother. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. That verse says a man can think he's going down the right road a long time and winds up being wrong. One of the saddest things about human history is all the millions of people that have went down a dead-end street. The end thereof are the ways of death. Now, if you drive... You're going to see some signs like this. I made this last night, so it's in a hurry, so it's not exactly shaped right. But I made this little sign. If you drive, you'll see that sign often. It'll either say dead end or it'll say no outlet. That means once you get down in there, there ain't no way out uh, unless you turn around and come back. But all of us, if you have driver's license, have seen this sign like this. Now, what I'm going to do this morning, I'm going, to, I'm going to use this sign for a few minutes, and I want you to look at it, and I'm going to preach on a dead-end street, a dead-end street. Now, uh, there's several things I'm going to say about it this morning, and I want you to just sort of look at that, if I can get it to, to hang there for a few minutes. Uh, it's shaped like that, but that, the dollar store didn't have one big enough, so I, that's the biggest one I could find. And... Uh, I went and and made that last night, and I thought, you know, when you're driving along and you turn down a road, the law in North Carolina requires that dead-end roads have a sign warning people. It's a law. The law, and that's why you see them everywhere. If somebody don't steal them, put them in their room or something, you see them going down lots of these little old roads around this part of the country. We've all turned down roads that say dead-end, no outlet, wrong way, do not enter, stuff like that. Now, it is, so when you're going down a road, really, if it's not the scenery, it's not the, the, the beautiful, or the, or the terrain, or the smoothness, or even the roughness of the road. It's the destination that's important. It's where you're going, or where you're going to wind up if you go down that road. Please give me attention this morning, and I'm going to preach on a dead-end street. The Bible said in Matthew 7, 14, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for broad is the way that leads where? To destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. The Lord said there's a lot of people, most people, are going down the broad, easy, sightseeing, easy to, uh, to uh, road that leads to destruction, and many there be. So let's talk about a dead-end street this morning. When a man goes down a dead-end street, I want to say, first of all, I'm going to talk about the danger of ignoring information. The danger of ignoring information. Maybe you saw it, the sign. Maybe you didn't. Or maybe you just saw it and ignored it. Maybe you saw the sign and said, I don't believe that. I'll take my chances. This looks like a good road. I'm going down. I went down a dead-end road. I'm going to talk about sin this morning. I'm going to talk about, I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, the trouble the devil will get you into this morning. We're in a real world with real problems. You have a real body, a real soul, and you can ruin it just like that if you're not real careful. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, there's, there's people in the world, uh, I, I meet them all the time. I say, you saw the sign, didn't you? 
Didn't you see the sign back up there? Uh, you, either saw, you either didn't see it or you ignored it. Uh, your mama tried to tell you, didn't she? Didn't your mom try to tell you, honey, don't go there. Son, you shouldn't do this. Don't go around people like that. Don't take them drugs. Don't, don't, don't take that drink of alcohol. Didn't your mama, there was your sign right there. Didn't your friends try to tell you you're making a mistake? Look out. You're going the wrong way. Didn't your pastor, whether it's me or somebody, continually warn you, warn it. See, they put up a sign, danger. Uh, n- do not enter, danger, dead end road. You were told, you were told, but you ignored the information. Years ago, there was this, uh, back when people rode trains, long time ago, before, before everybody had cars, many people rode trains home. And when they go on trips and stuff like that, and they said... Uh, there's these, uh, uh, these girls, and uh, there were two girls, and, and they were on this train, and when they got to this certain stop, they told them, they said, uh, the bridge is out, it was storming, the, the road, the, the river was up real high, and it was bad weather, and they said, the bridge is out, the bridge is out, and they ignored it. They said, do you need a light? They said, no, we're fine. We walk this way every day. They said, you sure you don't need this light? And they said, no, we know where the bridge is. We can go around it. And the next day, they found their bodies down the river floating in there. You know what they call that story? Two girls who refused the light. Two girls who refused the light. Ladies and gentlemen, are you listening to me this morning? There are literally thousands and thousands of people right here in our area who see the signs, who are warned, who refuse the light, and just keep right on going, right on going. And you can't, you can't necessarily go by this world life. You know, there's always somebody telling you, do this, do that, go this way, go that way. The world has plenty of philosophy. If you go to school, they're going to tell you this, some of them. If you go to college, you're going to be pushed this way. If you watch TV, they're going to say, this is what you should do with your life. This is what, and this high tech, sort of, 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 of advice people are getting nowadays, all of it on a computer, all of it on, is not the right advice. I got a preacher friend of mine out in Texas, and his church is way out in the middle of, I mean the middle of nowhere. I mean, they don't have big old trees like we've got, but they've got trees and cornfields, and just, I mean, forever and ever. And they, this, this guy, they, I mean, he, he, his church, and he had this big shot preacher uh, come uh, to preach for him. And he said, uh, uh, I mean, a big, well-known, well-known preacher. If I call his name, many of you would know, uh, know the guy. And he said, uh, I want you to come preach for me. He said, I'll be there. He said, uh, and he said, now I'm going to have to give you the directions because our church is hard to find. You have to make a bunch of turns. You have to, he said, no problem. I got it. I'll just put it in my GPS. And uh, he put, and uh, them GPS thing, they work pretty good uh, around city where they ain't nothing but a bunch of blocks and squares. But you get out way out in the country, buddy. I mean, they'll have you going through people's backyards and uh, over the hump and, and heel and everything else. And uh, so this big shot preacher, it got time for church. He wasn't there. It got time for church. He wasn't there. They looked for him. They looked for him. He was lost. And he said he drove and he drove and he said turn here and he drove See, it does all you're thinking for you so you ain't got enough sense to get home uh, if, if that don't if it runs out of service or something and uh, that's why I always like I pay attention to where I'm going so I can get home without something like that and he turned this way turned that way and every road kept getting littler and littler and littler and littler and out there they have a lot of dirt roads I mean uh, they, they don't get as much rain and mud like we got here and uh, he drove and 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 he got out of in a cornfield, and he said, where in the world is this church? And he said, all of a sudden, he just run up a bunch of corn in front of him, and he had to stop, and it said, you have arrived at your destination. <laughs> he, he wasn't nowhere near that church. You know what he done? He listened to a little false information there. I mean, he, he thought he was getting some good advice, and they some hot shot preachers and some big time advice givers and movie stars and rap singers and all, saying, live your life this way, live your life that way. You better not ignore the information God's given you. All right. You better not ignore the information that God has given you. It's a bad mistake. Number two, the danger of insulting intelligence. 
It's insulting when your family and friends and everybody says, don't do that, don't do that, please don't get uh, take them drugs. You're going to ruin your life. Please don't drink uh, alcohol. Please get your life right. And you insult their intelligence. And what you're basically saying is, I know better than everybody. I know more than everybody else. Nobody can tell me nothing. Do you all know anybody like that? Nobody can tell them nothing. Mom, dad, aunts, uncles, cousins. Everybody said, you better quit. You better quit. You better stop that stuff. You can't tell them. They just insult intelligence and keep right on, right on, right on. Uh, and just because they're, I've, I've talked to, I don't know how many people in their 30s and 40s and stay drunk or stay high and they will not leave them pills alone. They just keep on and on. You know why you do that? Because you think, I'm smart. I got this figured out. I'm not out of control like some of these people. That's what they used to think. Listen, people, listen to me. If a hundred men lined up out here this morning and there goes one out in the interstate and he gets run over and there goes another out in the interstate and he gets run over and another and another and another, don't you think if I'm 85th in line that I'd start thinking, maybe I ought not to do that. Wouldn't, you, wouldn't common sense, wouldn't normal intelligence say if there's a hundred people in front of you died and overdosed and got in jail, wouldn't it sink through to you? I ain't going that way. I mean, don't some brains kick in somewhere? Don't you start thinking, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe, maybe this is a dead-end road. Maybe I'm going the wrong way. Hear me this morning. God put this on my heart. There's somebody here today that better listen to this. I'm telling you, it's been on my heart for two or three days. I'm warning you, somehow you, somehow you think you're going to come out all right. Somehow or another you think, not me. I'm too smart. I've got by a long time. See, I'm smarter than them crazy people that take too much. I'm smarter than them people that drink too much. I can handle it. That's what the devil told all them that died last night. You, and some people think, well, I, I got a little religion, and me and the Lord's got a little deal worked out, and I, and I talk to him, you know. And so he knows I'm a drug addict. He knows I'm a drunk. He knows I'm shacking up. He know, but see, me and him talk. He's, it's all good. We may, no, 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 you're, you're going down a dead end street, buddy. And don't, listen, listen to me, people. God don't cut special deals for nobody. Right, right, wrong's wrong. If I do wrong, I pay. If you do wrong, you pay. You do wrong, you're going to get in trouble. And I'm telling you, you better make sure you ain't going down a dead end road. And I'm talking, everybody in here has got somebody in your family, somebody you know, somebody you work with that's going right down a dead end road. Uh, we played, uh, had a basketball game. You guys that played on a basketball team a couple years ago, we was out there in, in church ball. Nobody's allowed to say any cuss words. I'm not saying it don't happen. Uh, but uh, I, I've heard a couple, not, nobody on our team. And, but I have heard a couple. And there's an old boy over there. I don't know how in the world. He, if he goes to church, uh, he, 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 I think they just drafted him to have a good team. And uh, they, they do that sometimes. And he is out there cussing and raising cane and blanket blank. And well, starts man, we, we ain't going to, hey, this is church ball. They can, the referees will throw you out of, the, out of the game and off the team if you use profanity. Well, he did. He did. He did. And uh, <laughs> we... Uh, uh, it, was, it was 59 to 59. Uh, and about just coming down about the last two minutes of the game, and he got fouled and got to shoot free throws, and he, here he went. And I said, that old cussing boy, go over and he got over and got the ball, you know, and he bounced a couple times like he, you know, and then he looked up and he went, Start blessing himself. Like a Catholic. He don't even know what that means. I was putting a sign of a cross on himself. I, I can't, and I thought, you reckon the Lord heard that prayer? You reckon, that's what people do. They think, they think well, I know I'm, I'm living in, in pure sin, but me and the Lord, we still love each other. No, no, no. You're going down a dead end road, big boy. I seen a girl, I seen a girl at the Nebo Mall the other day. The Nebo Mall, where I bought that piece of paper right there. Uh, and uh, Dollar General. 
And the uh, closest thing we got to them all, 40, 40 miles to Hickory, and uh, almost 40. And uh, I asked for the other way. But anyway, there's an old girl in there. And you know when you're in a hurry, there's always two or three people in front of you. And I was standing back there like this. I was trying, and this old girl, old girl, she was up there, and she had a little girl. I mean, she is all tattooed up and had her baby here, and she was all making a bunch of noise and stuff. And, all, and, she, st- and, and her and she ran to somebody she knew there. Me and Ethan was with me. And she, uh, but she was out in the car, right? He heard her when she came out. This old girl, she is loud. Everybody in the, in the mall could hear her. And she started. And she started saying, she said, Honey, I hate to go to the dentist because I, t- I had two abscessed teeth for nine months. I thought, Lord, have mercy. You had two abscessed teeth for nine months? Lord, that die, that's worse than dying. And she, she said, I had two abscessed teeth. He's here right here. But she said, I wouldn't go to the dentist. I'm terrified of going to the dentist. But she said, I just swish that moonshine, and that takes pain away. And we joke about the moonshiner here. I don't know where she's at. She, where's, where's moonshiner? She in the junior church right now? Oh, she's in there preaching back out to the kids this morning. Uh, but uh, we joke about that. I thought, the people still, people still drink moonshine. She said, you swish that moonshine over them teeth, and it quits hurting. And I thought, dear Lord. But the funny thing was, she said, now, my sister, she'd been trying to get me to go to church. And I was saying, I told her, by the grace of God, we was going to come in. That's the way people are. Listen, this part of the country is filled with people like that. Won't go to church, won't get out of bed on Sunday, eat five times a day or six, and talk about the world, the world's music, the world's fun, drink liquor, get high, and still think me and the Lord has got a little deal worked out. Common sense, brother, tell you are ignoring it. Number three, number three is the danger of irrational insanity. You just keep on going and going and going, ignoring the warnings. We talked, me and Kelly talked to a girl in a hospital not long ago. Laying there, leg busted open from here to here, and you, dirty needles and, and stuff like that. And you know what I told her? I said, you know now, we're going to read your name in the paper, right? You know that, right? We're going to see your name in the paper, so-and-so, 40 years old, Dead. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Why don't you know? Everybody else does. What makes you think you're the exception? You say, Brother Danny, you're, you're just nailing me down. That's right. God put this on my heart. It's time to quit, people. It's time to lay it down and walk away and never do it again. Turn away from your sin this morning. You say, but we're in love. Get married. You say, I don't want to get married. Live without him then. That's your choice. You cannot do wrong and expect God to, but you can't go down a dead end road and expect everything to be all right. I'm trying to be your friend this morning. The danger of ignoring, you know what? It's, you're gambling with your soul, buddy. You hear me? Uh, the devil fights. He'll fight you this morning. I was witnessing to a man yesterday. This man was way up in years in, in Hickory at the, in them apartments down there. This man sitting there on, on, just like that, just sitting there like that. And he, he told me his name. And I went over and said, how you doing, buddy? I'm a preacher. He said, all right, how are you? I said, where do you live at? Upstairs there. He said, I've lived here seven years. And I started talking to him. I said, are you a Christian? He said, well, no, not really. I said, well, why not? I mean, a man, he's probably 70 years old. I said, ma'am, why, why aren't you saved? Why, why don't you? And I said, listen, have you ever asked the Lord, have you ever just got down, you and the Lord, and said, Jesus, come into my heart and say, I went through three of the four things you've got to know to be saved. Number one, you're a sinner. Number two, you've got to realize there's a price on sin. Number three, you've got to realize Jesus paid that price. And I got to there, and the door opened, and another guy come down them steps and just sat down right behind him and interrupted us. And I've done this long enough where I know that oh, the devil sent you down here, buddy. Right when you get down to get somebody to say, the phone will ring, somebody will show up, baby starts crying, 
Happens in church too, you know. I mean, them kids will go crazy on it because the devil is working. He wants to just keep you blinded, keep you blinded, keep you blinded till you fall off the edge. That's what the devil's plan is. That's what the devil's plan is. It's irrational. And I finally just told that guy I'd be praying for him because I started talking to that other guy. I said, you go to church anywhere? He said, if I go to church, I'll go to my, my old church where I used to go. Like, don't start on me, preacher. And I thought, listen, I didn't start this. You did. Uh, go back upstairs. I didn't say that. Uh, that's what I want to say. <laughs> but anyway, anyway I, 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 was, I said, well, I'll be praying for y'all. And I, listen, brother, that old boy's one day closer to hell than he was yesterday. That old boy, he may even be there by now. Are y'all listening to me? If you're not saved here today, if you're not saved here this morning, you are going down a dead-end road. You're headed down a dead-end road. Listen, when what you say, well, I didn't you Listen, you're born headed that way. When we're born, we're born going the wrong direction. Every once in a while, you'll hear somebody preach, and they'll say, exit. Calvary, exit, get off. You got a chance to get off. You got a chance to get off this morning. You got a chance to come to the Lord, come for the cleansing power, and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. It can happen to you today, friend, but you will let you be irrational if you say no to Him. Number four, and I'm through. Number four, the danger of intentional iniquity. Death is coming. I know people that say, I know I'm wrong. I know I'm living wrong. And I ain't about to get right and change. I'm not ready. That's intentional iniquity. You know, you can get out here and get tripped up and sin. The devil deceive you and get your heart. The Lord will be awful merciful with you when you repent. But when you just harden yourself and say, I don't care what he says. I don't care what he done for me. I don't care how much blood he shed. I don't care how much he preaches. I'm going to do this. You're, you're courting a tombstone. You, you are flirting around with dying without God. Ladies and gentlemen, you hear me today. It is intentional iniquity. Intentional. I, I've used this illustration before, but I feel like there's somebody here that needs to get saved this morning. There's a man one time, uh, he, did, he didn't want to die, or he wanted to know when he's going to die. So he had this imaginary conversation with the death angel. And he said, death angel, please, please don't, don't let me just die unexpectedly. Give me some warning. Give me some warning. And, well, you can do that. And the death angel said, yeah, I'll warn you when it's your time to go. Well, time went on, time went on. He got older and older and older and older. Finally, one day, the death angel comes and said, all right, you ready to die? He said, wait a minute. This ain't fair. You told me you was going to warn me. You told me that I'd be warned before I died. And the death angel said, I did. He said, how? He said, every time you saw a gray hair in your head, that was me warning you. I'm coming. He said, every time one of your teeth went bad or a wrinkle got right here, that's me warning you. I'm coming. Every time you got up in the morning and felt a little pain in your elbow or your knee, that's me saying, I'm coming. He said, I've been warning you for years. And you wouldn't listen. People pray. Somebody in here needs this. It's the danger of intentional iniquity. There ain't no going back. There ain't no coming back. The Bible said death and hell at the end of this thing. The wages of sin is death. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Years ago, there was a man who met a famous preacher in a motel, motel lobby. And this guy was preaching in town. He said, you're so-and-so, ain't you? He said, I sure am. He said, my brother used to talk about you all the time. He's a preacher. My brother's a preacher. And he used to tell us stuff about you all the time. And the preacher looked at the man and said, well, God bless you. I remember him. It sure is good to meet another fellow Christian. He said, nope, not a Christian. Not a Christian. He said, my brother had all the religion there was in his family. And he said, but I heard him talk about you a lot. And the preacher looked at him and he said, now you know that you ain't going to have forever. You're going to die one of these days, don't you? He said, you sound just like him. Y'all say the same thing. And he said, I'll, I'll, I'll be seeing you soon. And took his wife and walked out the door 
And nine days later, the preacher picked up the paper and in the obituary common was that man's name. He had less than two weeks to live. Less than two weeks. He did down a dead end road, y'all. He went down a dead end road. You say, well, Brother Danny, the drugs that I take are legal. They'll, it don't matter to the devil. They'll kill you just the same. Listen to this. Hello. My name is Drugs. I destroy homes, tear families apart. I'll take your children, and that's just the start. I'm more costly than diamonds, more costly than gold. The sorrow I bring is a sight to behold. If you need me, remember I'm easily found. I live all around you, schools and in town. I live with the rich, I live with the poor. I live down the street, or maybe next door. My power is awesome. Try me, you'll see. But if you do, remember, you'll never break free. Try me just once, I won't let you go. Try me twice, I'll own your soul. When I possess you, you'll steal and you'll lie. You'll do whatever you gotta do just to get high. Like lie to your family and tell them you're going somewhere when you really ain't. And always disappearing for a little while. And nobody don't know where you're at. God does. God does! You'll lie to your mother. You'll steal from your dad. When you see their tears, you'll, should be, sh you'll be sad. The crimes you'll commit for my narcotic charms won't be worth the pleasure you feel in your arms. You'll forget your morals and how you was raised. I'll be your conscience. I'll teach you my ways. I take kids from parents and parents from kids. I turn people from God and separate friends. I'll take everything from you, your looks and your pride. I'll be with you always right by your side. You'll give up everything, your family, your home, your friends, your money, and then you'll be alone. I'll take and take until you have nothing to give. When I'm finished with you, You'll be lucky to live. If you try me, be warned. This is no game. If you give me the chance, I'll drive you insane. I'll ravish your body. I'll control your mind. I'll own you completely. Your soul will be mine. The nightmares I'll give you while lying in bed, the voices you'll hear from inside of your head, the sweats, the shakes, the visions you'll see. I want you to know these are all gifts from me. When it's too late, you'll know in your heart that you're mine and will not part. You'll regret that you tried me. They always do. But remember, you came to me, not I to you. You knew this would happen. Many times you were told, but you challenged my power and chose to be bold. You could have said no and just walked away. If you could live that day over, now what would you say? I'll be your master. You'll be my slave. I'll even go with you all the way to your grave. Now that you've met me, what will you do? Will you try me or not? It's all up to you. I can bring you more misery than words can tell. Come take my hand. I'll take you to hell. I knew a man. When I first got saved, good, this guy, he was just as good as gold. He'd do anything in the world for you. And he had a drinking habit problem. And he would not quit. He'd go to the altar, ask God to help him, forgive him, and then he'd go right back and drink again. Just like some of you do with drugs, pornography. Pornography is as bad as any drug in the world, buddy. It pollutes your soul and your mind where you can't even, can't even find God unless you really seek him. And that man kept on and on and on and on and on. Well, I told him, People told him, people told him, dead in road. Dead in road. Dead in road, y'all. We told him, dead in road. One night, I'd been off to preach somewhere, come home. Everybody didn't have cell phones in. When I got home, somebody called the house. I said, Danny, please come. He got out in the road. 
You ever wonder why when somebody gets drunk they want to go out on the road or on the railroad? But the devil drives them out there to kill them. And he's laid out in the road on a summer night looking up the stars. And a car come flying down the road and he realized, and just raised up and it hit him, the bumper. Took him out just like that. Just like that. Now you think, you think if that guy could come back and sit where you're sitting right now, what would he do? Would he say, oh, don't pay no attention to him. Just, I tell you what he'd do. You get in this altar. Listen, if it takes if it takes getting away from your friends, get away from them. If it takes getting away from your family, get away from them. If you're messed up here this morning, I'd get in it. Don't be embarrassed. It, we've all we've all had our problems. But you got to get in this altar and you beg God and you stay there. And I'm telling you, you stay there. I'm staying with God and I ain't going back. I'll die before I go back and do it again. When you get like that. God will help you. Don't go down a dead end road. Let's stand. Let's stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed. Heads bowed and eyes closed this morning. Nobody's talking. Nobody's moving. I want Christians to pray. Please pray. I have two questions. Number one, every head bowed and every eye closed. Nobody's moving. First question, do you know that you've been saved? If you know, Brother Danny, I know that I've been saved. I'm not, I'm not everything I should be, but I know that I have been saved. Raise your hand, please. Just raise your hand all over the building. God bless you. God bless your hands all over the building. God bless you. Is there someone here this morning that say, Preacher, I don't know if I'm saved or not. I don't know if I've been saved or I know I haven't been saved. And I don't want to go down the dead end road. I don't want to wind up in hell screaming and begging for a drop of water on my tongue. I don't want to wind up without God forever and ever and ever. We're going to pray for you this morning. We're not going to come to you. Ain't nobody going to embarrass you. But I would like to pray for you this morning. Would you just let us pray for you? Just slip up your hand. Take it right back down. Anybody? Anywhere in the building? Right now. Right now, slip it up, take it right back down. Raise that hand real high where I can see it. God bless you. God bless you. There's a couple here this morning. If you're here this morning, you say, now, I know I've been saved, preacher, but I need to get some things right. That's what the invitation is right now. If you're here this morning and you've been saved, but you need to make some things right, I want you to just get out. We're not going to sing. We're just going to pray for a few minutes. Teenager, young person, mom or dad. Come on, right now. That's right. That's right. Come on, young people. That's right. Come on. Amen, boys. That's right. Thank God. That's right. Don't keep your heart tender. Pray, boys. Pray. Anybody else? Come on. Others are coming. Others are coming. Just slide right out of your seat. Get down here on this altar this morning and say, Lord, I know you're able to help me. I know you can help me. I know you will help me. God, I know, God, that there's things in my life. Listen, the devil ain't playing, y'all. He ain't playing with you. He'll ruin you really, really quick. Really, really quick. He'll ruin your life in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. You'll get messed around doing stuff you never thought you'd do. Amen. Others are coming. Others are coming. Others are coming. Amen. 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 Come on. Thank God. These folks come off the buses this morning. Praise God. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Others are coming. Others are coming. Let's get in this altar this morning. Don't get off that dead end road. Get off of that dead end road. Amen. Get off of that dead end road. The Lord will help you this morning if you'll let him. The Lord will help you today if you'll let him. Get off that dead end road this morning.